The Inconvenient Truth, Final Cut Pro 10. Um, so I've been doing this a long time, so why the hell am I standing at TechServe uh, to talk about a product that seemingly the entire blogosphere thinks is uh, for skateboarders? This is Final Cut Pro 7. It is the place on your couch where your butt fits exactly perfectly, because you've been sitting in it for 10 years. You know, the perceived deficiencies of the original Final Cut Pro became the workflow that most of you made up. Here's what people think it lacks, multi-camera, OMF, EDL, XML, backwards compatibility. Here's what it actually lacks, which is, um, it's missing OMF. When's the last time anyone exported an EDL? Yeah? You have a floppy drive you maintain? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's what we're talking about here. So, okay, so just take that, so just take that off the list. All right, look, it looks like iMovie out of the box, but I promise you, that after using it for a short period of time, it is not. There is tape transport control inside of the program. It's meant for anything that travels over a firewire cable. It's not good enough for most people. Most people who are dealing with tape have some kind of third party card, Decklink or Kona. Both of those cards come with their own tape transport software. I'm not saying it's the best thing I've ever seen, but for the fact of the matter is, for that kind of that layback, I don't think it should be Apple's responsibility. They'll never do it as well as a hardware manufacturer is going to do for their own piece of hardware. You drop that stuff directly into the program and you immediately start editing. No render. Try that in Final Cut 7, right? It's a no-no. It's a no-go from the boot. That's a major rewrite to all of a sudden take non-optimized codecs, not only edit with them in real time immediately, with no render, no render, color correct them, add effects, graphics, and even output. And the rendered output is no difference in quality than the live playing output at all. Zero difference. Our editors, they usually use a separate timeline, right? They made selects for the editors, depending on who the editor is. They made these string outs. The fact of the matter is, that's not necessary. The organizer window is the string outs. You're going to take a couple of keywords, they let you take 10 currently, attach them to a hotkey. So as you're watching, you're keywording. You can keyword and stack them. I can keyword a clip. I, within that clip, I can mark a range and put 10 keywords on it. The point here is that media can now live in multiple bins simultaneously without you having to duplicate media and screw up your XML by doing so. That's a pretty big deal. Let's show projects. This is where your projects live. This live nature of Final Cut Pro is pretty awesome that here's a bunch of projects that we left holes in purposely. I don't even need to open them to find out what's in them. First thing that's going to freak everybody out, and this is a problem with muscle memory that you've all made from using Final Cut. Here's a clip, and I delete it. Ripple delete is the default. And if I don't want it to ripple delete, I use the old ripple delete, which leaves the space. Now let's talk about how we can customize the look of the timeline. You can do just a little bitty media, right? We've all seen that before. We can do kind of uh, video thumbnail, no, um, no waveform, and audio below. Waveforms are for everybody. Every editor in this room has their way that when a producer or director comes in to stack footage vertically in the timeline and hide clips and solo stuff out, right here, there's a small icon right here. We've made an audition. The fact of the matter is, I know this looks like cover flow, but here's what ends up happening. Here's clip one. It automatically does a play around edit. So I'll take A4 and B4, right click, synchronize clips. It makes a brand new clip that is a compound clip. So from effects. Uh, I'm able to just touch aged film over here and scrub it, or uh, here, I'll do something so the people in the back can see it. And I'm scrubbing it, but I can just hit play. I haven't applied it. This is H.264 footage. The filter is applied completely in real time. iPhoto libraries, even network-based iPhoto libraries, all show up inside of the application. So there's a placeholder, right? There's a lovely lady on a hill, but I'm doing something that's, uh, I need a medium shot. Fine. No, 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 no. I, I actually, I'm going to need a long shot here. I'm going to need it to have four people in it. Um, they could be men and women. It's a party. I have one for everybody. It's a sunny, it's a cloudy day. And uh, let's see, it's not pastoral. It is, uh, we're urban. <laughs> now, freak it, it's an interior. Does anyone feel any better about this now? That's fucking awesome.